Uh, and sorry, my glasses. Um, Irene Leong Estwood. I'm not Irene. <laughs> only, at the, only at the weekends. Um, I'm going to give this presentation. <laughs> Nobody heard that, did they? Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did hear that. Exactly that. But I'm assuming that you're Irene. <laughs> yeah, yes, I this am. is good. Irene. So I'm going to give the presentation on behalf of Irene, but this comes from her. And what's your name? My name's Tim Webster. Tim, so I work you. a lot with neurological conditions, stroke being one of them, but Parkinson's, MS, brain injury, etc. But from an exercise perspective, so it comes as no great surprise to anybody that as we get older, long-term health conditions are becoming more and more common. Now, I'm not old. I'm only 59. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I should never have done this. <laughs> well, you I'm, just, you no, just I'm glad you said that because you right? I'm glad you said that because I'm older than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, look, that, this comes as no surprise, and, and it's it's summarised in the first slide that we have there. What's quite interesting is that this is from the Ministry of Health in February of this year. So it's, t it's actually time that we started looking after this group. Now, the common view of disability is this. Mm. But disability, I want to get rid of that term. Yeah. We, are, we are working with people with long-term health conditions. So Parkinson's people aren't Parkinson's patients anymore. They're people with Parkinson's. Yeah. And that whole language and semantics thing needs to be taken into account. So the people that we're talking about, this is Tekka. He's part of our prostate, prostate cancer group. This is Wayne, he has Parkinson's, but he still juggles. And this is Philip, who's sitting behind me, who's just done the 10K. Uh, Philip's had five strokes, I think, and holds the record. The uh, so are... these are the people that we're now talking about. So what's the size of the problem? Well, according to all of the research, one in four New Zealanders is now living with a long-term health condition. Hmm. One in four. Big number. So... Now, you can read that, and I'm <laughs> expecting a smile. Um, so thus far, the strategy has been to... <laughs> thus far, the strategy has been to, to enable uh, disabled people or people with long-term health conditions to go into mainstream facilities. And I think that's worked. I think there's been a pretty yeah. good job done of that. But this cohort now is so big that our submission, or Irene's submission, is that we now need... It's no longer adequate, and we now need to look at creating something else. So... People with long-term health conditions uh, need condition-specific exercise. It is no use putting them into a mainstream exercise facility. They need uh, people who are qualified to work with their particular conditions, and it's very relevant for stroke. Mm -hmm. Council gyms are great. I work with the council all the time. Council gyms are fantastic, but they're not equipped to do this job, and they're not staffed to do this job. So with the exception of people like Irene, who is gutsy and determined and rocked up at my door, having caught three buses. She catches three buses to come to me at a gym from um, New Brighton. Um, there are somewhere north of 100,000 people in Christchurch living with long-term health conditions who are in the dark. They are on their own. There's nowhere for them to go. They won't go to mainstream health, uh, uh, exercise facilities. So, and if you're living with a stroke and you're in the dark, you are in trouble. You're on a very slippery slope to mental health issues, and that's a whole other ball game. So this is a big, uh, a big deal, and our request this afternoon, or Irene's request, is that uh, the council uses some of its $13 billion budget to explore creating a world-class exercise facility, and I mean world-class, uh, in Christchurch to meet the hundred, needs of the 100,000 people, one in four, who are living with long-term health conditions. Now you can talk. Want to say anything? Um, I I also propose not to uh, um, a new Brighton have a community center. We don't have one, and then for the gym, also for children. So, can I just add one thing before you ask any questions? We tend to associate people's conditions with who they are. Irene is a vice president of an American bank. She's lived in Hong Kong. She's lived all over the world. That's who she is. She just happens to have a stroke. OK. I don't know if there's any questions. Sorry, you um, raised uh, you know, a really significant issue because 
As you say in the submission, because I read the submission beforehand, and it commented on the, you know, the availability of some supports within the health system, for example, if you've had an accident, but not if you've got a, um, a health condition. And, you know, and that to me, I just wonder whether we should be a city that perhaps connects the, the, all of the resources of the city, and if we could perhaps talk to the, to the health board about whether we could, we could treat our facilities as more available um, beyond the cause of the, of the particular condition. Because I think of the fabulous facility out at Burwarden, mm. um, you know, places like that, yeah. whether we could do that a little bit more constructively. Sorry, yeah. The Burwood, I've been there, is uh, not open for public. No, that's what I'm saying, is yeah. that if we could find a way of not caring about why you're in a condition that requires some additional support for exercise um, or rehabilitation, if we took away the why, then that would create more facilities. But we've also got our Metro Sports facility, which is due to open um, in the near future, and and I'm thinking that I mean I want it to be a well-being centre. I don't I don't want it to be focused on on anything other than offering opportunities for people. Um, so let let's see if we can take that conversation further. Um, Tim, thank you, and um, Irene and weekend. Irene, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I was just actually that's what I was thinking about. My understanding was that the Metro Sports was going to have. A facility of this type. Could we get an update of yes, that? Yeah, because I, I think it's really will. important. That Thank you. Great. Thank um, you. The the um, public health health of QE two and all that. They are the gym is so close to each other. Mm. You yes. can really access to a chair, yeah. a mobility chair. Which is why the Metro Sports may in fact be the better. Um, option for uh, people who, who use wheelchairs, so it, it may be a better option. But um, you've, you've raised a really powerful point. Your submission was really good. Making the personal trip in here to present to us really helps, so thank you very much for doing that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now